Hey everyone, Mark here, Tech Stack. Excited to talk to you a little bit about, uh, I'm gonna geek out here, but um, Forster took over serious uh, decisions um, a couple years ago, and uh, serious decisions on already on the right path to a lot of its thinking um, around kind of that demand unit waterfall. Forster took it over, renamed it to, uh, I think it's the B2B revenue waterfall. Uh, they recently um, introduced an update to uh, the kind of serious decisions kind of thinking. And frankly, tech stack here, we absolutely love it. Um, we are pretty passionate about B2B software companies, have lived uh, in too many years, too many decades of trying to run software companies and dealing with the mess that is uh, data and CRM systems and opposing kind of uh, approaches to, to managing funnel. Um, especially in the last couple of years, everything has changed in B2B software. I personally love uh, this new um, this new revamp from Forrester. The premise, pretty darn simple, right? Absolutely right. I think we all know it. They put some stats behind it. Most business decisions in a B2B context are done with buying groups. Okay, they're not done individually. But the reality is that a lot of our systems, a lot of our thinking is ancient. It's like a decade old. Imagine going back a decade and looking at the software you made for a living. It would be horrendous to look at. Um, so you imagine how much evolution in that 10 years. The buyer journey has completely changed in the last 10 years. Um, and the reality is B2B software buying cycles are, are certainly not linear events, right? Like B2C, very linear. Okay, I see an Insta ad, I click it. It's a thing, they, they already know I'm into that stuff, I buy it, it comes to me, right? Very linear path, uh, I'm the only decision maker, I'll make um, discretionary decisions without having to necessarily consult anybody. But for whatever reason, B2B uh, treats their buying uh, cycles exactly the same way, and they're not linear events. And they involve many, many decision makers. I'll 100% guarantee if you have the stats, and I guarantee you probably don't even have the stats, what your win rate is when you only are single threading opportunities, it's probably garbage, 10, 20%. Your win rate when you actually map out an organization and get buying, uh, get buying votes um, across decision makers and influencers, I'm speculating here, but it should be 50 to 80%. Most sales organizations are not aligned that way. Most marketing organizations are not aligned that way. The, re the reality is that how we were taught to capture demand, uh, I wouldn't even call it demand generation, like nobody does demand generation anymore. How we capture demand um, doesn't work. Um, it worked in 2010. It doesn't work anymore. So all that inbound, like oh, people are going to like, you know, consume my content. I'm going to get it out there in the world, SEO, all this kind of stuff. Consume it. They're going to click a thing, they're going to engage my sellers, sellers are going to close them, they're going to become a customer. That does not work anymore. Um, the reality is that you need to allow buyers to educate themselves. When they get educated to a point where they're ready to buy from you, they'll engage with you. And, and the trick is to stay front and center with them. And that's job, marketing's job, right? So that is demand generation. But most of our marketing spend is become demand capture, which it, you know, doesn't, doesn't work. Cost of fortune doesn't work. So most B2B software companies are really struggling with that handoff between marketing and, and sales. And, um, and, and also the inbound leads are too expensive now. So you need to get a, you know, get more sales engagement and get more of those outbound motions going and more account based strategy. So all the ABM and targeted account, all this kind of stuff has come full circle. Stuff we did 20 years ago is front and center today, just kind of accelerated some great software. So so the, the reality is B2B software companies aren't set up to do any of this stuff. They, they should be thinking about accounts. They should be able to map many decision makers, but the systems that they're using aren't, aren't aligned. And and I we like I personally love kind of everything that almost well, things that Forrester has been talking about. So if you look at the evolution of serious decisions over the years, all the you know garbage uh, acronyms that we all kind of still reference, MQL, SQL, all this kind of stuff, came out in 2006, right? It's a long time ago, that's what, uh, 16 years ago. 2012, they, um, on, on, you know, when all these marketing automations came into play, 
they made it super fancy, right? You got all these workflows and stuff. I like barely can get it working, you know, between like you know going from Marketo to Salesforce or whatever, like all the handoffs between systems, complete garbage. You're like trying to get the stuff working was impossible. But you had all these acronyms, right? And so you're going in front of board meetings. You're saying, oh, I got 250 MQLs this month. Well, you know, great. Well, like how, what did that cost you? And what's the conversion on them? Well, like most uh, marketers can't reliably get that information. The whole notion of attribution is completely garbage. And then on top of that, you're like breaking down buyers into these acronyms, which make no sense at all. These are human beings who will hopefully be a customer spending lots and lots of money with you. You can't treat them like MQLs and SQLs. So in 2017, Sirius came out with a much, much uh, better aligned kind of like thinking and more humanized approach and, and, and more much easier to understand, right? So target, active, engaged, prioritized, qualified, pipeline, closed. Really liked it. So we we introduced our kind of tech stack kind of way of thinking, you know, in around that, you know, a little bit later in that, 2019, around that kind of kind of thinking. And then they brought a step forward in 2021. And, and if you're an organization that is not embracing Forrester's approach based on 2021, good luck to you, okay? Especially in today's climate. I'm recording this in 2022, mid-year. You know, uh, it's going to be tough in the next six months. You've got to go back to your existing base and sell them more stuff. you got to be able to identify your ideal customer profile and hit them hard. Um, you're going to be really relying on a really strong marketing to sales integration to do that. And what Forrester's put out is the best way to do it. Okay, so effectively, I'm going to kind of talk about what it looks like and, and why it's important. But get off MQLs. Get off this whole lead to opportunity conversion. It's complete garbage, okay? Most CRM systems are still based on this. This is architecture that is over 20 years old. Salesforce stole it from Siebel. Microsoft stole it from Salesforce. HubSpot stole it from, stole it from Salesforce. Complete garbage. The only reason it ever existed was because back in the 90s, this space was so damn expensive that a, you wanted and needed a flat record structure with leads. And you would have a database of, let's say, a million leads. You might only have 10,000 that converted into opportunities. Opportunities have related entities, accounts, contacts, a bunch of stuff falls off of that. The data structure around the stuff on the right is 20 to 30 times larger than a flat lead structure on the left. But people still use it because it's a nice, easy thing to hand off to sellers. But it's complete garbage, especially when you're dealing with a non-linear scenario. Number one, most sales organizations are only closing 15, 20% of the stuff that converts. Great. So what happens to the 80% of the contacts, accounts, and opportunities that don't convert? You can't bring it back into leads. Next thing you know, marketing's doing stuff against two different record types. Complete garbage. Most of the marketing automation programs don't even do a good job of tying all the insights that were from the lead to the converted account. So you lose all that past history, which is, you know, if you're a seller and you lose all that history, you have no idea the context of where stuff came from. Garbage. Just get rid of it. The second issue, and, and I think this is the more important part and where Forrester's coming from, but if a lead comes in, on your website from, you know, organization, I don't know, call it Microsoft, some, some random contact, first time in your system from Microsoft, whatever, right? So you, you, you know, lead converts, you sign it to the rep. Rep's like, ah, oh, man, they're not even getting back to me. I, I don't even know what's up. Okay, great. Okay. A, a week later, Microsoft hits again, but it's some person in a completely different territory. So it probably goes to a completely different seller within your organization the two sellers aren't talking to one another because that's how we train them and and but you're you're missing all the insight good you know if the first lead said i'm from microsoft corp dot you convert it new account microsoft corp dot second lead says i'm from msft convert it oh great new account msft they're the same account you're not mapping them together you're missing all those insights and and you're not seeing the force through the trees the lead process completely lets you down generates garbage data in your system. 
complete garbage and you just got to get rid of it. And what I love about kind of Forrester is, is kind of how they basically tell you to like, just don't do that. The problem is that all these CRM systems aren't really architected, except for tech stack, aren't really ar architected to help you with any of that. So what is the Forrester kind of, especially in 2021, they're like totally getting down with whole, all this like candidates versus current customer language, acquisition versus renewal versus upsell, cross sell. I love it. But it's combining a bunch of concepts. And, and what I don't like about what Forrester is saying is that you should stick it all on an opportunity. But personally, as a you know, sales leader, the uh, last thing I want to see are a million garbage opportunities in my system. I only want to see the stuff that actually has activity with a buyer. So they're kind of suggesting you put in all these dummy kind of opportunities as a placeholder. And especially if you're an organization that has multiple products from multiple buying groups, don't like it at all. Okay. We have a much better approach, but I do like how they want you to think about opportunities and accounts a little bit differently. And I'm going to show you how kind of tech stack deals with it right now. And I'm going to give you a kind of a scenario. All right. We're going to incorporate this concept of lead scoring, which we've had for you know a decade, right? Most organizations don't really do it right, but um, this is walk through a scenario, all right? Historical lead opportunity process. Brian, IT manager. We used Microsoft before. Brian's from Microsoft. Okay, download some stuff. Downloads the guide in our website. Top of funnel kind of call to action. Seller, you know, is a seller going to follow up? Probably not. Probably a waste of time. Download guide, not a huge intent and signal, right? Let's give him 15 points. Okay, so we know Brian's awake. We know he exists. Not quite enough engagement to get a seller on it. Brian, you know, but get stuck on our, get stuck on our marketing nurture, right? Email in the database. We know what Brian's into. We invite him to a webinar. Shows up to a webinar, another 15 points. Now we're at 30 points. Nurture, follow up, email, whatever. Clicks the thing, five points. Okay, so now we're at 35 points. Time goes on. Brian eventually engages, wants a demo request. Demo request is a bottom of funnel um, signal, right? Intense signal. Um, should get a seller on all demo requests, right? Um, that's 85 points. Still, in my world, doesn't hit the threshold of 100 points arbitrarily. Pick a number of 100. I typically would only want a seller to engage with a buyer when they hit 100. So maybe we don't have enough points on the demo request, whatever it is. Point of my illustration is that if we theoretically say I only want buyers who hit enough cumulative points, i.e. 100 points, and only want to send those over to sales, Brian's not hitting the threshold with Microsoft. But what happens if Mary at Microsoft gets forwarded something from Brian and clicks on some stuff and consumes some stuff on our website? Again, independently, Mary not doing enough to engage with a seller. Rebecca also with Microsoft. Again, not doing enough to engage. Maybe they download the same guide that Brian did, Maybe they go to our pricing page, which I want to throw super duper points on. Independently, they're not doing enough to really engage with the buyer. However, as an organization, that's a lot of stuff going on. So what we want to do is incorporate the lead scoring concept from just the lead, but apply it to contacts that are linked to the same organization and accumulate the contact uh, score at the account level. And so in this case, you could totally miss all of this activity going on. But when you accumulate all that kind of stuff together and you can actually map Mary and Rebecca and Brian as part of the same organization, which I would challenge with a lead opportunity handoff, impossible. Can't do it. But when you do it correctly, you can see that this, this organization is ready to engage with the seller. It should be all over it. So we incorporate all that, and but we throw all those stages at the account level. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a sec, but you know, typically our recommendation, we like, you know, working off of that prioritize of a hundred points. Everybody gets up what a hundred is, right? Like it's, it's an easy concept to get your head around. And so we have a bunch of stages. We're using all the serious decision demand unit waterfall stages. Target, it's just a name in the database, right? Just somehow landed in there. Sometimes target can exist for two seconds as target. Sometimes you like, you know, do a sales Intel or zoom info, you know, dump into your CRM, right? So you know their name. We don't know if they're real or not. Um, 
But you start a target, and we also have a stage called detected. You know, it, it's a stage in the serious demand unit waterfall. Typically, our automation will just kind of flip over to detected. And, but you get to the next stage, which is engaged. So engaged is any account where there's some level of consumption, some level of intense signal using uh, point scoring. Okay. So if they have a score greater than zero, it's automatically engaged. And we move it to prioritize the next stage when that accumulated score of all the contacts intent is greater than 100. So to me, you should be eyeballing how many prioritized accounts you get in a month. Those are the accounts that should be going to the rep. You should be measuring how many prioritized accounts become pipeline or versus go back back to nurture, key, key statistic, right? But this is the first human being engaging with the uh, the buyer or buyer organization within within your company, right? Prioritize, really key. Should, but it's purgatory state, shouldn't be there very long. Now, if you're an organization that has SDRs, right? So you have maybe the SDRs get to prioritize and then like there's some sort of qualified process that goes to the rep. Then we have a kind of a qualified stage um, as well, only used. It exists, but only use if you have an SDR process. Um, but then when the seller, if they don't kick it back, right? So it's easy to click a button, nurture, it goes back to like detect it or whatever. But if you don't kick it back and the seller actually creates a pipe, uh, an opportunity, we move it to pipeline. Okay, so we move to pipeline. So again, a key event. Number one, how long does it stay between prioritize and pipeline? Really important metric, velocity metric. Number two is the conversion, right? So how much stuff that goes to pipeline, uh, prioritize makes it to pipeline. Okay, so I'll show you in our reporting, kind of where you get all that kind of stuff. But this is beautiful. By, by creating this account structure this way, a lot of neat stuff happens. So one, you get all the conversion velocity metrics I just talked about. Two, you can actually organize stuff in your database, right? So typically accounts all look the same. Well, you know, maybe some CRM systems will tell you which ones are customers or which ones are not. Most likely not, right? Because most CRM systems aren't smart enough to update to a customer when a contract closes. It's typically stuff you have to customize. But the other thing is, like, marketing knows, like, don't include any pipeline um, con contacts associated to a pipeline account in marketing. Take them out. Take them out of all your nurtures. You, the last thing you want is to do a BOGO, like, email, uh, you know, buy now uh, type thing if they're in the middle of a contract with one of your sellers. So... So this is super handy for marketing. You know, we also have other concepts we can talk about, like reprospect concepts. But how you market to a you know a target account or a detected account is very different than an engaged account, right? So you can like kind of change how you're educating people and all that kind of stuff. So this is like valuable gold for for marketing using these stages, in addition to the conversion and and some of the velocity metrics. But this is essentially how kind of Forrester wants you to think about this stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to actually kind of flip over to our app. This is TechStack, right? So we talk about what TechStack is another time, but this is how it's manifested in TechStack. So here's an account conveniently, Asus. It's that targeted stage. Why is that targeted stage? Again, we know Veronica may or may not be a real human, has no, no lead score, right? Now, if I look at the next stage, I got an account stage called uh, Allstate. Allstate's at Engage. Their total engagement score is 54. And the reason is Allstate has one contact, Leota Dillard has a score of 54. And, and why does Leota have a score of 54? Well, you know, you can check it out really fast. You can see that, you know, maybe Leota, you know, in this case, filled out a posted form, you know, visited a web page. We've associated that form to 50 points. And that's how we know that Leota who is associated to Allstate, has a score of 54, not quite 100, greater than zero, therefore engaged. And you contrast that to another company like Aetna. Aetna has a score of 104. Same deal, right? But in this case, Aetna has multiple contacts. One has a score of 54, one has a score of 50 to make a score of 104. Because across the threshold of prioritized, it is now in a prioritized state. Simple, right? So we can track all the important things in here so I can see all of the uh, durations. So when the accounts move to what stage and how long they've been at that stage, all that stuff happens automatically. Perfect. Next, next example. Here we've got Hasbro. Hasbro is a pipeline. It's a pipeline because we have an open opportunity. 
So I created an open opportunity, moves the account to pipeline, great signal for the organization, hands off. David Addison's all over this one. Let's not hit anything, anybody at, pipe, at Hasbro with any communication. Perfect, job done. Um, and then the next example, I, ha I have a customer. So I went from Hasbro, which is a prospect, and here I've got my Red Bull example, which is a customer. And the reason why they're customer is I want to deal with them. We, you know, created a subscription. You know, they own a bunch of products from us. I've invoiced them, all that kind of stuff. So we automatically move them to a customer. So that that is essentially the flow and kind of how it works. And it kind of manifests manifests itself into reporting. So you get some really really cool stuff here where you can like really basic, right? But you can count how many accounts you have at various stages, right? So we have a little dashboard to do that. To me, probably more important, the, a couple key things. One is this concept of funnel conversion. So here I wanna look at, and I don't know, this is my demo database, so I have no idea how good the data is, but what I wanna look at is within a given period of time, how many prioritized accounts did I create? How many of them went to qualified or pipeline? So here, what this says is that 92% of the time, a prioritized account will create a pipeline, okay? And then the other thing I can do is, and I can see my rate of creation month over month, right? So these are great leading indicators, right? So if you know that prioritized to pipeline takes 30 days and pipeline to close, you know, I'll go to my win rate in a sec, but you can quickly get those, those attrition stats, right? And so you can start forecasting your business a little bit better. Like you can't, like if I need to close a million bucks next quarter, but I only have a, a million bucks of funnel creation uh, a month, um, I can quickly figure out if I got enough funnel, if I'm creating enough funnel, because you know that you need to create demand or capture the demand well in advance of closing the deal, right? So that's where you can get into the analysis of win rate. So here in my database, I can look at my win rate um, you know, 96%, you know, my demo database is pretty good, right? I wish we all had that. Um, I can look at my um, funnel analysis and my creating enough opportunities in a given month. So you can see here, um, you know, how, how, uh, how often, or how, how many funnels, am, uh, opportunities am I creating? and by what products, uh, funnel creation, opportunity analysis, deal cycle length, look at it by industry, all this kind of stuff. So these are, this is the reason kind of why you build all this, right? One is organize all the data. Two is so that you can actually market to the people at the right stage. And three, so that you, you can get better and more sophisticated reporting and statistics and really start capturing kind of where you're winning and why. And so I'm gonna leave you with that. That's our take on the Forrester uh, B2B revenue waterfall. I think it's super important for seller, seller and selling organizations, specifically in B2B SaaS. Uh, so thanks for checking this out.